So we would like to start our today discussion with a question, open question to the audience. Uh, what do you know and what would you dare just to declare uh, about the options how you can invest abroad as a Ukrainian citizen? Who would like just to tell a few words about it? Please, don't be shy. Uh, may, may I help you uh, to, 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 uh, to make the things uh, simpler? Uh, is anyone of, of the audience uh, did uh, invest uh, in uh, foreign stocks, equities, uh, bonds? Okay. How many? Oh. Why don't you Not many. raise a hand? So please tell us your experience in a few words just. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I ask organizers to give us a new mic? Well, experience is very simple. Uh, with uh, some, uh, we have uh, e-license. So it's, it's, as long as you can prove the source of your income, you could get e-license, pay some heavy fee, and get your money brought to your account or to your brokerage account. And then from that, you're basically free to invest in everything except, I guess, euro bonds, because they are for professional investors only. Okay, thank you. So now having uh, found out that there are people who know how to invest abroad, uh, does anyone else would like to raise a hand and tell that he knows something about you know investing to abroad? I doubt that there is only one person who had tried it or at least knew about it. Oh, please, lady. Uh, please give a mic to the lady. Actually, I never tried to invest in overseas, but uh, as far as I know, uh, it's subject to licenses, licensing of National Bank of Ukraine or Ministry of Economy of Ukraine, depending uh, whether you invest uh, by money or by property. And uh, licensing, as, uh, as far as I understand, was prohibited for individuals, and since recently you can invest um, subject to electronic license of National Bank of Ukraine for individuals. Thank you. Uh, we will talk about it later. Uh, my question is also to encourage those of you who have been actually considered investing abroad uh, but didn't know how to do it. How many people during your study or after your study have actually considered investing abroad while being in Ukraine? So, uh, yeah, as we see that there is some demand about investment, uh, investing abroad, but there are some obstacles, so you just know that you would like to invest, but you know very little about you know the process, where to go, how to do it, how much it costs. So most probably that is one of the reasons that do not um, make you do the actual investment and execute the deal. Uh, I hope that you know the proof of the uh, cash flow is not the, the real reason why you are not uh, doing the investment because it is an important point that you need to prove your uh, source of funds. Uh, so probably, uh, Andrei, yeah, come on. Can you tell us yeah, just a few words about how did you come up to the idea to uh, allow this kind of investments? You know, uh, why now? Why, why, why uh, so recently you have decided to do it? Why is the amount, 50,000 bucks, is the... How did you come up to that kind of amount? Uh, just, just share your thoughts about yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if we could, could have a day or two, I, I, could, I could describe you the long story, how, it, how this idea came to the reality. But since we are really already tired, I know it's a Friday evening, so I will be very shortly discussing you and telling you the story of how we came to this idea. Uh, first of all, you know that we have a number of uh, currency restrictions that were put in place from 2014, 2015, because of the uh, crisis, war, etc., etc. You know all this story. And you know there was also uh, uh, the restrictions also uh, related to the licenses of private individuals uh, abroad. Um, and according to the uh, concept of the currency liberalization, which we presented uh, last year in December, uh, it was uh, shown to the market and to the place that uh, we have some 
uh, priority uh, among the kind of operations which we would uh, we would like to liberalize first. For example, this is current account operations, foreign investments by um, legal entities and companies, then uh, credits from abroad, and and then the last was the individuals. Uh, the thing is that uh, when we started to relax the restrictions, uh, to make easier for business to live, we saw that there's some signs of stabilization on the financial markets and banking system. Uh, we wanted also, we, um, we received, actually we received the order from the head of the National Bank to, to consider what we can do with the licensing at all for uh, individuals, by the way, as um, uh, indeed. Uh, the thing is that we are really uh, tightened by the decree of the Cabinet of Ministers uh, from 1993. It's written directly there that the, all the operations of uh, individuals, it's, uh, they need uh, licensing from the National Bank. So we couldn't overcome the things that are already put in place for 24 years. And uh, this is in law, so if we will, would like to change the law, I, th you, you, I know you, you understand it's very good that uh, it, would, it could take years, for example, with our Ukrainian parliament, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, so we were looking for um, other ways, if it's possible, to do some tricky, interesting things, how to uh, make life easier without changing the legislation, I mean the law, changing the laws. Um, first idea was uh, we could uh, actually legalize the people who has earnings abroad. We know how many Ukrainians work abroad. We know some people who got uh, last year uh, Ukrainian citizenship. They still got the pension, for example, in the other countries abroad. And they have this problem because they even don't know that they have to got the license here. When they come to Ukraine, they became the Ukrainian residents. They need the license because they have a, uh, sources of wealth uh, from abroad. Otherwise, actually, there is a penalty in the legislation from the tax office. That the penalty is 100% uh, of yeah. the operations. So. Yeah. People even, uh, um, so when we asked tax office, did they use this penalty? They said, no, we, we don't know what people have brought. We have no idea how to control that. We, we, are, we don't have uh, even, even uh, experiencing uh, to put the penalties on such levels for someone. And we decided, first of all, we can do that. Uh, the money from abroad, the sources from abroad that, that people have, this shouldn't be uh, the kind of operations that needs requires the licensing. Because th the wording in the decree uh, is saying that uh, placement of the uh, foreign currency abroad, for example, is needed licensing. So we just make a statement, what is placing abroad? We told that uh, in our um, regulation of the National Bank, we decided that uh, the bringing the currency uh, moving it abroad, this is kind of operation that requires the license. It has sense. Because otherwise, if the money, the source of the money is from abroad and it's placed on account abroad, that then we don't have control, we don't know uh, how to see it, and we have no any information about that. So these kinds of operations, they don't need licensing. And it was the first little step to make life easier for all. So the next uh, question rise then, how could we make uh, life easier for people who want really to invest abroad? Uh, of course, we understand that in, in times of crisis and uh, economic uh, instability, this is not, not the prior top priority for the country. But uh, from another side, we understand that people are still buying property. People are still investing somehow. They don't, they don't get licensing, but we, we see the advertisement of buying properties in Georgia, in Bulgaria, and somewhere else. So somehow people do it. We understand how. We know that the cash, you can take the cash without any licenses. Yes, you can take it out of the country. Uh, so uh, we decided that if we have to give a person a license, then let's make it as much easy as possible. That's why we came to the idea of the e-licenses, so-called. Uh, meaning that uh, there is no need for person to collect the pack of the document, come to the National Bank, wait for one month until the decision will be done. To this. I think this is one of the main obstacles for, the peop for people um, who wanted to invest abroad. And we decided if for us the, the most important as a regulator for the National Bank, the most important question is, 
uh, that if we can allow people to invest within some certain limit for the first period, for the temporary period, okay, let it be. We will see the reaction, we will see the volumes and the number of people who want to do that uh, within this limit. Um, let's be sure that this money is not criminal. Let's make clear that this money is not mo from money laundering, from financing terrorists or some, something like that, which is forbidden by financial monitoring. And the second question is to be sure that uh, the taxes are, are already paid from this money. That's, it. that's all what we wanted to provide. So that's why these three documents made uh, are noticed in this regulation number 54. So you came with order to the commercial bank, you show the source of your wealth, and which proves that you have paid the taxes. And uh, the third document is just the document which proves where, uh, which shows what you are going to do. If you just want to place your money, move it to your account abroad, then you don't need any, any contracts. If you invest to the, in securities and in other instrument, financial instruments, you show the, at least some kind of contract with a broker or sub-broker, um, which proves that you are doing these operations. You want to buy a property, you show the contract where, with whom you are dealing and what is the property you are buying. Um, we, we tried to, we, we had some kind of electronic system within the National Bank which for registering uh, credits abroad. So we decided that we can, on the base of this system, we can do uh, very quickly the same model for electronic licenses. So it means that a person, individual can come to any uh, commercial banks, which is uh, switched to our systems with his document. And within this limit, uh, f which is registered for his name, he will be able to uh, invest w and do whatever he, uh, he wants. Because we are not an interested uh, what is the next step of using this money. We are absolutely, uh, we don't have this information. We are not interested and we are not even trying to make it clear where the money goes and what are you doing abroad with your own personal money. We only need to know that this money is clean, it's, not, it's legal and the tax are paid. And uh, regarding the amount, um, actually it came like uh, consensus. You know, we have uh, programs within IMF. IMF is always conservative. They uh, don't want to tell the, the, no the figures that they proposed first. You wouldn't like it. Uh, but uh, then we decided, okay, if we have already allowed people to transfer the money per day, per month for different uh, Operations. Non -trade. Yes. Um, then, if we have this limit for a day, or this limit is for per month, so if we just multiply it for 12, for example, 150 grivnas for 12 months, then we will have the 50,000 per person, which should be actually enough, we decided, for the first stage, uh, for a person to buy some shares, equities, some property, or if it's a family, they can do it together. So this amount should be actually enough for this for this stage, for this level. And we will see. We, f we need to see the reaction of the market, whether it, it will be a huge flow of the outflow of the capital, or, or it will be just a small number of people who decide to invest. That is, that's it, actually. If it's clear, if I... Is it, is it correct to say that... Uh, from an NBU perspective, you would be eager to allow even a higher uh, yearly amount of investments, but you know, but IMF or other institutions have a little bit, you know, dec decreased uh, your appetite. Uh, of course, but uh, we need to uh, analyze now the data that we have. We have not not very much actually. We have, as of now, we have about 150 licenses issued. So. It's not not a big, not a huge amount. And what it is, is in it terms not of not volume? Sorry, what is it in terms of volume in in dollars? So fifth hundred fifty lines. In total volume, it's uh, just a couple millions of dollars. So this is absolutely not crucial. This is one of the argument that we will we can show to our partners with IMF as well, showing that you see, guys, we have relaxed these uh, investments and there is no huge outflow that you were afraid of. So we can move further, but the thing is that we have such uh, some other priorities in liberalization at all in the concept. Yes, we have a question number one with uh, uh, dividends, uh, repatriation, and uh, other restrictions that that are still in place for exporters and importers. But also, if um, 
if we see that there is no any crucial uh, factors with these investments of individuals abroad, we will consider first, I think it will be, uh, because we do liberalization step by step, we want to raise the limit first, and then the final target is absolutely free capital flow. This is our final goal, we promote it everywhere, so in our nearest and hopefully bright future we will cancel this restriction at all. And there's, we're also preparing the new law, if you are aware about that, the currency law, uh, which will provide the free capital movement in Ukraine. And um, the main idea there, one of the ideas there, is also the cancelling. There will be no any individuals, uh, individual licensing at all, never. It will be only, we in our project, we, we consider only licenses for banks general licenses and the currency licenses for financial companies to do the foreign uh, exchange operations. Uh, for individuals, for legal entities, we, we only consider uh, some kind of limits for the transitional period. But at the end of the day, we, we think that there was, will be no any individual licenses at all. I hope it will be our past story from the past times. Thanks. I would add uh, to the uh, official uh, statements made by uh, National Bank my personal, uh, uh, of course, uh, humble opinion uh, that uh, we do expect a bright, bright future. The only question is how soon it's happened. Because uh, uh, we uh, all expected that the uh, deregulation in, in currency, in currency operations, uh, would uh, would happen uh, in in, in a couple of years ago. It's still it's still a question uh, when, but uh, the more uh, we wait, the sooner we expect it to be. Uh, as uh, to uh, get get back to the to the question of the foreign investors, uh, in fact, the uh, the limit set by the uh, national bank uh, is uh, quite enough at, at for the moment. Uh, because uh, none of, uh, for example, our clients do not uh, uh, does, does not hurry to invest uh, up to the uh, upper limit. Everyone uh, wants uh, wants to try with the smaller size, with smaller volume, uh, and invest. Uh, for example, uh, me personally invested uh, the the, the one thousand just to understand how it works, to to get uh, the license first. To uh, transfer the uh, to wire the, the, the money, to get the access to the trading system, to uh, to push the buttons, the uh, to to fill it. So uh, and uh, my prediction is that uh, uh, the uh, the next uh, probably half a year, maybe a year, most of the uh, clients and potential cl uh, potential clients will uh, do the same. They they will. Uh, we will uh, try to touch, uh, to to sniff, to to, uh, to to push the buttons, to uh, to get uh, the sense how it works, and uh, after that, uh, some of them uh, will uh, will be able to make a decision uh, to invest uh, serious serious money. Uh, but uh, the problem is uh, in Ukraine that uh, not many of individuals. Uh, can fulfill the requirements of the National Bank to provide the, um, the proof of the uh, taxes paid in Ukraine because uh, at the moment uh, not every uh, profit, not, not, not uh, every income uh, can, be, uh, can be used. For example, if you are an individual interpreter, you cannot uh, declare, you, 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 do, you, you do declare the, uh, the incomes, but you cannot use these incomes to uh, get an electronic license at the moment. So we all expect that uh, this uh, will change uh, quite soon, but at the moment, uh, if you are in the middle in the interpreter, you cannot uh, invest the money uh, which you, uh, which you uh, uh, own uh, as an uh, individual interpreter. Uh, there are many other uh, obstacles which uh, will prevent the uh, the huge volumes uh, outcome from the, from uh, Ukraine. We all know that uh, there are a lot of money under the mattresses, pillows, uh, in in uh, how say it in uh, in English in banks. 
in cans, in, 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 in glasses, yeah, okay. So, uh, no, uh, but uh, all those uh, uh, money will not outflow uh, next, next years because of the many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, you do uh, have uh, to transfer the money abroad. You cannot uh, pay this money to the local broker. Uh, you have to uh, pay for uh, SWIFT uh, uh, wire transfer. And uh, the cost of this uh, uh, wire transfer is uh, not, not, not so, so low. And that uh, means that if you want to, uh, to, to try uh, the investments uh, as I did uh, with 1,000, you have to uh, pay, uh, let, let, let me remember, 17, 17, uh, 17 uh, US dollars at least. Uh, f uh, just for SWIFT, so it's uh, uh, it's, 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 no. it's, 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 it's more, more or less uh, adequate, uh, but if you want to, to, to try with a small sum, it's, uh, it's essential because the, uh, the yields have to be uh, so that to, to cover this, etc. But uh, I, uh, I may uh, talk about the problems for, for ages. Uh, my idea is just to get you the, uh, the, 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 uh, the very understanding how it works. And I know that Andy uh, has the presentation with uh, pictures which uh, show you uh, how, how it works. Andre, would, would you be so kind uh, Thank you, to tell Lush. us? Uh, actually, I want just uh, to highlight two things. Uh, first, uh, the changes which we see now and the opportunity which uh, we will present shortly, uh, they came not because uh, our central bank is the best central bank in the world, not true. Uh, but surprisingly, it was uh, probably the best uh, government organization which has finally introduced some reform. Uh, the demand uh, for this kind of service has been driven uh, by ordinary people. And frankly speaking, uh, many uh, investors, individual investors, they were trying their luck through various schemes. Some were smuggling cash out of Ukraine in pockets, opening investment accounts abroad, some were using... Uh, web money, uh, uh, money transfer uh, companies uh, just uh, to send money to some unknown brokers at that time, maybe later becoming known brokers, and people were investing, actually taking their risk, uh, because uh, these kind of investments were not regulated, and they were not recognized by the central bank, and until recently, actually, they were even facing some jail terms. Uh, but uh, again, uh, central bank did what it had to do, uh, it was not a pioneer uh, looking at developments in other countries. We also saw that even uh, our uh, neighbor, northern neighbor Russia, they were also uh, controlling uh, the currency, controlling the outflows of money. Uh, but when they initially introduced uh, the opportunities to their citizen, I think it was fixed at $150,000 and then it was lifted completely. Now they can uh, do it without any license and a declaration up to, I guess, like half a million. And uh, the very reason why the outflow was not that big is precisely, uh, as Lyosha pointed, uh, it's uh, the need to prove the source of it. Uh, I think the central bank uh, was uh, concerned with potential risk of lots of money flowing out of Ukraine. Uh, whoever wanted to do it, they did it. They have an offshore structures which help them to smuggle money out of the country. And then, as you rightly pointed, money can be invested without your control. Uh, having $50,000 set at this stage uh, could be enough, and I'm glad that Central Bank is considering the option of expanding the limit uh, when, when you see there is no risk. And <coughs> another important thing, I guess, Elosha raised the issue. Uh, there are lots of money which are unofficial income, and any liberalization of income in this country uh, will make this money legitimate for investment in the future, and then there will be no problem. Uh, so, uh, with these words, uh, unless you have any questions already, I would like to ask uh, our technician to put up the presentation, and maybe we'll give us quickly go through a few slides. Any questions at this stage? Yes, no? Okay. Oh, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, yeah, my colleagues have already mentioned that uh, this investment opportunity uh, happened uh, after June's decision of the central bank uh, through a resolution on electronic licensing. Um, one of the person in the audience uh, mentioned that it was not possible to invest in the past. It was possible, but it was hassle. You really have to come to the central bank and receive an individual license per each transaction. You have to be very precise 
uh, outlining the specs of the trade, basically everything. Many of the Ukrainians uh, who are not speculative or short-term investors, but uh, rather like industrial long-term investors, they have officially invested abroad, becoming majority shareholders in various Western structures. But that was not very convenient form of investing for an individual, and especially for the one who wants to make a quick speculative profit uh, using the opportunities of trading in foreign markets. Uh, now we have such opportunities. Uh, yes, at the current stage it kept at $50,000, but uh, uh, we should try from at least uh, some stage. What's needed? <coughs> Again, the uh, central bank representative uh, has been very clear. Uh, you have to provide the identification and the proof of income. Uh, you need to have a foreign currency account locally uh, from which the money can be sent abroad. Uh, the central bank does not really limit your choice how you're going to use this money, uh, whether pay uh, for a doctor or your uh, travel, uh, travel check, but uh, we are talking about uh, investment opportunities. In this case, you need a foreign broker. You can have uh, the prime broker, the one which is already providing the trading platform, or it can be an intermediary uh, sub-broker, a company which acts as a financial advisor. And this is also the company which would run identification process uh, on any investor. This is part of normal investment process in any country, and especially in Europe, uh, which is going a little bit paranoid uh, about uh, anti-money laundering, and they are trying to control uh, everything. Uh, therefore, yes, the role of the broker is extremely important. Uh, no unregistered, uncontrolled cash can be invested. Uh, there are certain costs for a broker to run this operation, therefore don't be surprised uh, to see that uh, some brokers, thank you, some brokers uh, would put a minimum cap uh, on opening an investment account. Uh, in the case of one broker, it's for example $10,000. That would still be considered a very, very small retail investor. Uh, to give you example, uh, in the US, a large institutional investor starts with a hundred million dollars uh, under management. So we are still a very small retail investors here. Um, okay, what do you do? As I mentioned, you need to have a foreign currency account in any Ukrainian bank. Theoretically, you can have uh, money abroad already, uh, whatever the reason you had it open for, uh, but this account can also be used uh, to wire money to the broker account. And uh, once you have uh, the relations installed based on the brokerage agreement, you can wire this money to the broker account. It's a foreign broker in our case. Uh, I hope this will change in the future, and uh, I think Elosa will be more than happy to talk about it and push Central Bank for even further deregulation. Uh, but let's leave it uh, for future Q&A. Uh, and the prime broker is actually the broker which, uh, let me call him the owner, the proprietor owner of the trading platform. So the money ultimately will need to land uh, in the hands or in the bank account of that broker because uh, he is in charge of the settlement. Cash goes against uh, stocks, bonds, uh, and other instruments. Uh, this picture shows uh, that uh, it's the whole process remains under the control uh, of you as an investor. You provide an instruction to send money, to withdraw money, uh, to... Uh, confirm the trade, either the, it's a buy or sell. So you are in the charge of your money, of your investments. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, why the foreign broker is needed. Uh, in most cases, foreign broker is a regulated entity. Uh, as such, uh, you are not giving money to any crook. Uh, this person, in most cases, cannot just run away with your money. Uh, it's not uh, another MMM. Uh, and uh, in addition, if it's, for example, a, a European broker, uh, your investments are also partly insured. Uh, for example, in Europe, uh, an equivalent of uh, investment guarantee fund would be $20,000 per, oh sorry, euros, yeah, per, per investor. Uh, and the overall liability of a foreign broker is limited to its uh, charter capital. But even if you are one investor in the company which has uh, 850,000 euro capital, uh, your risk is still insured at the level of 20,000. So 
investments is not riskless, but I, I guess you learn all that uh, through your school. Uh, one more note here, uh, the foreign broker is not your tax agent. Um, the way the regulation is structured is that uh, you as Ukrainian citizen uh, are obliged to pay taxes in Ukraine unless you have uh, any other reason to prove that you're a taxpayer in other residency. Therefore, whatever income you make uh, and you earn, uh, the foreign broker will not file for you, but it will provide you with all the necessary documentation uh, so that you file this uh, income uh, and taxes in Ukraine, which is another good news uh, for Ukrainian government uh, as uh, additional source of income may appear. Uh, I'm not naming this uh, foreign broker that we're working with. Uh, it could be any prime broker, but uh, the, the one we, which we choose to cooperate is uh, uh, the largest American foreign broker. Uh, it's been also named as uh, one of the lowest uh, cost foreign broker. Has access to over 100 markets in 24 countries, which really expands your uh, investment universe. Basically, uh, once your relations are installed, you can download the trading platform uh, and uh, using online resources, uh, you will be able to place your cash order and uh, realize your investment strategy. Uh, this orders or decisions could be delivered by phone, by email, in any other modern form of communication. Normally, one broker provides a very uh, unique and comfortable decision, technical decision uh, with uh, access to multiple markets and multiple instruments. It could be shares, equity, bonds, uh, ETFs, uh, futures options, uh, etc., etc. Uh, by bringing this all on one screen, uh, like the one you can see here, uh, you can have a very convenient form of uh, managing your, uh, your individual portfolio. You can have a table with all your investments, uh, which uh, can show daily changes, weekly changes. Uh, you can also see the overall performance of your portfolio. Uh, in the lower left uh, part of this table, you will see some fresh news on the companies uh, which are highlighted. Uh, this is very convenient because, uh, for example, uh, if you didn't have access to such a platform and you would like to use a Bloomberg screen, it would cost you quite a lot. Like 1800 uh, euros per month uh, and in this case uh, this support would uh, come uh, for free and we already mentioned the various markets which are accessible uh, and of course uh, some of you could think of uh, <coughs> some really exotic Cote d'Ivoire or Rwanda market but uh, in most cases uh, this access will be very expensive uh, and therefore uh, we and our clients focusing uh, on the more uh, liquid uh, and biggest uh, um, stock exchanges like uh, NASDAQ, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, LSE, Eurex, Warsaw Stock Exchange where uh, quite a few Ukrainian stocks are trading. Whether the trading is expensive? Uh, no, uh, it's relatively cheap. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, you can probably get uh, online order execution at even some five basis point or 10 basis point and the uh, online uh, tariffs, uh, even abroad, they tend uh, to be in the same uh, metric, like 0.1% per trade. Uh, I would just uh, draw your attention that uh, if, you trade, if your order is managed by an individual consultant, uh, you wanted to have a discussion first with and then you place an order by the phone, normally it involves another person and his time. Therefore, there is a minimum payment and in this case it will be $30 per trade minimum. If you are not involving anyone else and you just trade online, uh, the minimum would be $10. And again, uh, I'm talking uh, about this particular case, uh, some other brokers may not charge any minimum commission and uh, it could be even a 50 cent trade. Plus, the broker would also act as your custodian uh, since um, securities uh, need to be accounted somewhere. You want to have proof uh, that you are the legitimate owner of the securities and since you cannot physically take them and keep in your pocket, uh, your investments is recorded as a line ele electronic registrar and there are companies which run this registrar and for their work uh, they charge. So there is monthly maintenance fee of uh, 20 or 50 dollars depending how active trader you are. Uh, but I just want to mention this uh, so that you were aware uh, about additional costs. Nike. Facebook or any other companies, Intel, Amazon, uh, which I mentioned here, 
Uh, these are the example of big companies uh, which uh, you and your colleagues were reading a lot about. These are success stories in the global economies. And many of our clients, they were always trying or they wanted to be a part of the success story. They see the companies grow uh, in value, uh, pay good dividends. And uh, previously, they didn't have access uh, to such investment stories. Now, they have. So they, they could become shareholders in these companies. If someone doesn't have, uh, I will get back to that, uh, Vanguard. If someone doesn't have time to analyze the P&L and balance sheet of a particular company or really wants to make an investment abroad, but is not sure whether this or that company is good, whether Apple uh, stocks will go up after another quarterly results announcement, uh, but in general, believes that U.S. is on the upward scale move and the market always grows and he doesn't want to spend his time analyzing any particular company. It may just invest into ETF and ETFs could, be, uh, could provide an exposure to the whole market. Basically, you invest in the index uh, through an uh, instrument which, uh, which copies uh, the, share, uh, the dynamics and the way of investing into regular shares how you can look at the valuation of the company, you can construct similar tables uh, on your own. Uh, many of you could recognize uh, some familiar coefficients like PE. Uh, there could be many more. Some people uh, prefer to invest based on cash flow. Some people prefer the uh, coefficient of EV to EBDA. Uh, Americans, they like PE. So they like the companies which trade at low PE. But if you look, there are some companies which are valued at 200 PE, 50 PE. Uh, is there anyone crazy investing there? Yes and no. It could be just really fast-growing company. I remember when Facebook went public, it was trading at 100 times P, uh, and everyone was saying, or at least many people were saying, it will crash. It went up, it dropped, indeed, below the IPO price, but then it recovered, and uh, those who believed in that stock uh, made lots of lots of money. That's a little release from responsibility of what I just said. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, basically, just one more question. Um, mm, since we are talking about uh, foreign broker providing the services, not the Ukrainian broker, uh, one has to be careful in uh, specifying the functions. And uh, in Ukraine, uh, Dragon Capital is a company of the group of investment companies, and one of the companies within the group is providing the services. And I'm just authorized uh, to talk about it, to pick up documentation. Uh, and provide the answers to the questions. But uh, you will be dealing and signing an agreement with a foreign broker. Thank you for your attention. And Andrei, uh, do you know how to translate the word disclaimer uh, into Russian? <laughs> disclaimer, I usually translate as atmaza. <laughs> uh, but it's a joke. Uh, uh, I would add just just a couple of words to the uh, uh, to what uh, to what uh, Andre uh, just said. Um, the Univer Capital, uh, which is part of the Univer Investment Group, which I work for, uh, is uh, trying to implement the the, the uh, business which uh, is based on the uh, local uh, locally licensed broker. So we uh, uh, we see that the potential for that uh, kind of business is huge, uh, it's uh, quite easier, have to be in future, to open an account with the local broker rather than to open an account with the uh, European or U US broker. But at the, more, uh, at the moment, it is not so. Uh, to open an account with the uh, European or uh, US broker uh, is, uh, I would say, it's a piece of cake. You have, to, you, you have uh, not to sign anything. You have to uh, submit the uh, scanned copies uh, of the documents which identifies your uh, person, uh, your person uh, and your uh, proof of your residence, and that's it. And you uh, just download these uh, documents, scanned copies, on the website of the broker. Uh, in, in in a couple of days, uh, your uh, uh, your documents are uh, revised, and you, you you've got uh, the uh, the account. While uh, here in Ukraine, uh, you have to sign a lot of papers manually with your hand uh, signature. Um, uh, and the uh, regulation uh, obliged uh, you to, to get it uh, personally in the office of the broker 
etc. So we are, uh, uh, I would say, uh, ages uh, behind uh, behind the the European and uh, U.S. regulations, and I uh, hope that that would be the parallel process uh, together the, with the the current uh, liberalization uh, to liberalize the uh, financial monitoring which is uh, is uh, overdue here in Ukraine and it's out out of date completely and never, nevertheless uh, we are trying to develop uh, the model which is based on on these uh, local regulation with all those 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 papers uh, why why we think that uh, these kind of service uh, may be uh, in, in maybe in demand for local investors uh, first uh, is that uh, we are quite near we are uh, at the at the uh, distance of the of the hands you can uh, uh, literally touch us to speak uh, to discuss and to to get uh, assistance while uh, even uh, some uh, European or uh, U.S. brokers uh, do provide uh, the Russian uh, Russian uh, language support. Uh, usually, uh, it is not uh, too fast, I would say, uh, because it's uh, they are discount brokers. They are, uh, do not provide personal approach. Uh, while uh, we uh, uh, here in Ukraine can afford at the moment can afford to uh, to, to to provide you with support which is uh, much more wider, uh, especially uh, uh, in questions uh, uh, related to the uh, wire, uh, the, the money wire, uh, for example, through a bank to get in the, the electronic license, because it's still a process. Uh, it, it is uh, quite, uh, it's, it's much, much, much more simpler than it was uh, before uh, July this year. Because uh, one, one, one of you said that it was uh, uh, not possible. It was possible, but it was too complicated. And uh, the statistics was uh, before July, the uh, uh, individual license licenses issued by Central Bank, uh, National Bank of Ukraine, uh, was, as far as I uh, remember, uh, 65 for the uh, 24 years. Uh, 65 uh, individual licenses uh, issued uh, for uh, individuals, which is close to zero. Uh, the other concern uh, w which was uh, uh, said today uh, uh, that uh, you cannot uh, invest in euro bonds with electronic license. It's not uh, so. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you can uh, invest uh, while there are some, uh, some uh, nuances. Uh, which is uh, you you cannot uh, buy uh, any uh, euro bond, but the euro bonds which are traded on exchange. So uh, on the OTC market, you cannot uh, you, your trade is limited uh, with uh, one hundred thousand US and and more. So uh, you have to to get two licenses and so uh, to, to to make a trade. And some of our clients consider seriously consider the uh, possibility to get a license at uh, December uh, 31 and get the, the second one at the uh, 1st of January next year. It's uh, quite quite legal and uh, are, I think that uh, uh, at least uh, some of them uh, will do so, which is, uh, which is, which is good. But uh, if you want to, uh, to test with euro bonds uh, with 1000, uh, to, 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 to buy one uh, your bond, it is possible uh, if uh, the uh, the security is traded on exchange. There are some. The picture uh, is not that uh, beautiful as you might uh, get it so far, because uh, there are a lot of uh, legacy problems. For example, we as a local broker cannot receive uh, the uh, currency uh, to our um, to our bank account here in Ukraine. We do, uh, uh, we do, uh, we do, and we can receive the the, the money uh, at our uh, account abroad, but not not here, which is uh, which is an obstacle for smaller, uh, or I would say, probe investments. Uh, 
if you want to try, if you want to test the system, you want to test the broker, etc., uh, you you cannot uh, you cannot uh, pay uh, directly here in Ukraine. You have to to pay for Swift fees, which is, as I announced, is uh, is uh, quite quite significant. So. We expect that these uh, restrictions will be waived uh, quite soon, maybe this year, and uh, we will be able to uh, provide uh, the cheaper services, which allow us to collect uh, money from the, uh, from the clients here in Ukraine, and then uh, to, uh, to wire the some bigger amount to the uh, foreign account, uh, paying pain less and uh, providing the services, which is uh, a bit cheaper. I already mentioned that the, the r there is a restriction on the uh, a limited number of documents which is uh, allowed for banks to get uh, from, the, from the clients to provide the electronic licenses, uh, which proves the income. It, it was uh, quite, a squ quite surprising me that uh, so few our clients uh, uh, do have uh, the uh, official uh, official incomes at least those in, uh, incomes which are uh, uh, which uh, are fit in in the requirements of the s uh, recent uh, recent requirements of the central bank. Uh, I my predictions uh, was uh, was that uh, if we uh, saw uh, 65 licenses issued for uh, 24 years, then after the electronic licenses is used, we will see uh, 65,000 uh, uh, licenses. Uh, it's, uh, it was my expectations, but I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't thought that uh, so, uh, th so, ma so many of our clients, almost let's say 99%, cannot prove the income uh, which is. Uh, Required uh, with, the p with the papers which is required at the at the moment by the uh, national bank regulations, uh, many of them are working as a uh, outsource uh, IT specialists, as an individual interpreter, and they cannot uh, use this in income at the moment, which is not fair, as you ask me. Uh, but uh, probably we will uh, we will see uh, the the waiving of these restrictions as well. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of tiny details of the regulations of the uh, of the National uh, Securities uh, uh, Commission uh, of Ukraine, but you have to uh, to know uh, two major uh, differences between the uh, accounts opened with the foreign broker and the uh, local broker. One uh, which is already uh, mentioned. By Andre, uh, the foreign broker is not your taxation agent, so it's your responsibility whether to pay taxes or not. It's uh, 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 up to you to decide. While the Ukrainian broker and Univer as well, uh, we are an, uh, a taxation agent, and we uh, have to to inform the taxation authority uh, of your incomes. So. Just keep it in mind. The second uh, is that uh, the foreign broker uh, can prove the title of your property rights on the securities you bought according to the uh, uh, corresponding regulation, European or US or whatever. While at the moment uh, in Ukraine, the title of the property rights uh, may be uh, proved uh, only for uh, on only by the uh, depository uh, entity license here in Ukraine, which cannot open an account with the foreign broker, with foreign custody, uh, foreign uh, central deposit, etc. So uh, uh, while you are uh, trading with the foreign um, broker, uh, you are more uh, secured with, uh, uh, with property rights. Uh, while you trade in with the uh, local broker, uh, your uh, security is your securities is less secured. Let me, let me joke so. 
Uh, and uh, we are working on that, and we uh, think that uh, the regulation will be changed, but uh, it requires changing of the law, and we know the speed of changing of the law, which is maybe next century. Oh, I hope so, maybe next, next couple of years, who knows. Uh, nevertheless, I just uh, have to understand that the regulation uh, in Ukraine is uh, not, uh, not perfect so far, but we are working on that. I want to maybe uh, just expand your understanding of the investment market, especially for those who are not investment market specialists. Uh, I will um, also draw some parallels with other markets. Uh, in general, why are we talking about uh, this opportunity? Uh, can you simply just buy Amazon from Ukraine? No, and Alexei uh, told you, and also and the capital restrictions prevent this. Uh, moreover, there is a specific thing. Uh, foreign shares are not available in Ukraine uh, as foreign chocolate. You, you cannot go in the grocery and buy foreign shares. Uh, there is a quite complicated uh, mm, depository system which runs accounting or shareholding of these securities. And by the way, uh, I, I know that legislation will be changed, and hopefully. Uh, there was a mechanism introduced how a foreign company or foreign listed company can appear in Ukraine, and one example is uh, MHP stock. Uh, they produce Nasharyaba. But <coughs> this process is called dual listing, when the main listing of the company is in London, uh, and it took us four years to bring this security to trade on the local stock exchange. It's extremely complicated. Uh, maybe the process will be simplified, but I really believe it will be much faster uh, to open an easy route for Ukrainians to invest abroad uh, than to create a, a broader uh, route to bring foreign companies to Ukraine. But nothing wrong with developing these uh, two, uh, two ways. Uh, Czech Republic, which received the capital markets in a similar way as Ukraine did through voucher privatization, uh, has also experienced massive delisting of the stocks. They had over 100 companies listed, and then gradually, as owners were consolidating stakes, uh, they had at some point maybe five locally listed companies. Uh, was it the end of the uh, stock uh, market in Czech Republic? No, because they opened up the market to foreign investments. And uh, in a uh, 10 year time, uh, the ratio of uh, money invested in the liquid Czech securities and foreign securities was like 40 to 60. Uh, we are looking at similar development in Ukraine, especially taking into account the rapidly shrinking uh, investment base here. Uh, there are just few companies uh, left uh, where you can invest your money, uh, given the corporate governance, dividend story, uh, and the fact that uh, many of the companies from uh, electricity or metallurgical sectors, uh, they became privately held companies and delisted from the market. So there is demand for investment, there is lack of supply domestically, and uh, opening up foreign markets uh, came just at uh, the right time. Yeah. Okay, thank you, our honorable speakers. I think we will open the session for the questions and answers. And I would like to ask the audience whether anyone has the first question. Please raise your hand. Yes, please. I actually got two questions. The first one is a quick one. Did I get it right that if you are a private entrepreneur, you cannot get a license even if you paid your taxes? Uh, unless you have uh, other source of income. So if you're like private entrepreneur and you paid your 5% in social taxes, you cannot do that? Uh, no way at the moment. Okay, and the second one. Uh, so is there any limit for, uh, for income you're showing as a proof of funds? So uh, it, had like to be, it had to be at least, uh, at least the same as the uh, volume of the transaction. So the electronic license uh, is obtained for uh, every transaction, not for the year, not for any other period of time, uh, you, pr uh, you provide the documents which, uh, are, sub uh, which uh, are supported the uh, individual transaction. For example, if you want to uh, wire 1,000, you have to provide documents which uh, prove that your income is more than 1,000. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Elaborating on your question, actually, I have to uh, highlight that um, the central bank decision uh, is a little bit narrow. It uh, targets only individuals, and as you have already noticed, uh, entrepreneurs, the private entrepreneurs are expelled. 
Unfortunately, uh, the asset management business is also expelled. I know in, in many other countries there are certain limits, 5, 10, 15 percent of uh, assets under management, pension funds or mutual funds, that can be invested abroad. Not yet in Ukraine, and I really believe in this yet, uh, because it's also important uh, as investment base shrinking domestically, and we want our asset management companies to be efficient, uh, we have to provide them with the opportunities. And uh, maybe uh, the central bank, the um, local uh, stock market regulator, they will uh, work out a solution. Uh, here I would like also to give a word to Emal to address probably those two, two issues. First of all is the issue with uh, individual entrepreneur's income that is problematic or are not available for investing to abroad. Whether the NBU is aware about this problem and whether you plan to address it and change uh, the situation in the, in the nearest future. And uh, the second also important question is uh, what uh, uh, Andrei has raised uh, for the asset managers, especially in the light of the upcoming pension reform, when we expect that the second pillar of the uh, investment funds will be available as a reform since 2019, whether our local asset managers will be able to invest at least a part of their assets and under management into foreign assets. I believe that it would, my personal opinion, it would boost much, you know, the uh, attractability of the uh, pr private, you know, pension funds and uh, private pensions. So, please, Amari, can you elaborate on those two questions? Uh, actually, yes, this, this uh, e licensing was um, discovered and developed, uh, especially invented, <laughs> yes, it was our idea, uh, for private persons, for individuals first. Uh, because the uh, interpreter, interpreters, they were treated as uh, legal entities and uh, this is another story. Uh, by the way, we also um, are trying to liberalize the limits which are existing for the investments abroad for legal company, legal entities. Uh, now the limit is uh, for about two millions uh, per year. We increased it from uh, the restrictions was fifty thousand dollars per month. It was very heavy restrictions uh, for uh, some certain period of time. And uh, our idea was to uh, to see how the what will be the volumes and amounts f uh, with uh, the legal entities. Um, we tried to consider how to how to divide the, the legal entities, maybe some kind of investments should be productive to support our export and some of them can be just uh, the capital outflow, but when then we decided it's very difficult to, uh, to separate such things. So we just put this uh, limit f for them at this moment. And the next step, of course, it will be the rising of the limit because uh, when we will have a new law, um, there will be no individual licenses for all. And for uh, legal entities for transitional period, we think maybe it will be some kind of the same system of e-licenses for you know, legal entities for some uh, limit. There is questions of how to control these amounts, whether it will be easy to to be sure that this is this company has uh, c cannot divide or, or some do some uh, fraud or something like that, but this is another issue. The thing is that at this moment uh, we uh, we consider also uh, to liberalize, mm, but it will be uh, a little bit later because uh, there are some other priorities in liberalization. Uh, but uh, the fact that we have. Uh, at least we will have several months of experience of uh, existing of this limit for legal entities. So it's also a, will be used as a database to show that um, lifting the restrictions on investments abroad for legal entities is also not uh, the source of uh, capital outflow. And then I will try to convince my colleagues and our foreign colleagues that this uh, restriction should be also gradually, step by step, uh, also liberalized. So I cannot say th the timing. Uh, we always say that we cannot say the dates. You see how the situation is developing. Uh, we always link our restrictions lifting to the macroeconomic factors. We we have to consider what's going on on the forex market, what how things are developing on banking system, 
you know, we have a ha hard years ahead. We have uh, years of elections. We have years of huge payments on our external debt. So kind of instability, we should be ready for some populistic steps, measures from parliament, from the government. And we, uh, you, you see how we, we are trying to target our inflation, uh, inflation targets that we have uh, uh, already uh, noted several times and we had to increase this and uh, the rate last year uh, last uh, week uh, so this is not so easy and but uh, I, I can only assure you that uh, as soon as the situation will be uh, favorable uh, we uh, we all are keen to to do it as soon as possible we understand that this is uh, um, uh, the investments brought not only in securities not only for um, pers purposes of buying some equities and shares, but also for productive, for opening new markets for legal entities. It's very crucial and it's very important, especially in, this in condition when we have lost the uh, eastern markets uh, in Russia and other, uh, some other markets are closed. Uh, we have to uh, help our exporters to spread throughout the world their pr products. So this is it, if, if it's clear. I would add uh, a couple of things. Uh, I do not know who uh, personally invented uh, that that kind of uh, workout, uh, which uh, which is called uh, electronic license. But my uh, opinion is that uh, this person uh, is worth with its personal monuments uh, established at the, at the central square. Really, really, because uh, uh, the. The biggest problem of Ukraine, biggest disadvantage is I not... I will tell them. <laughs> your if, words. If, if it is the, 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 uh, some, some kind of collective uh, mind, so it have to be the uh, uh, group of uh, persons uh, uh, in, in stone, in bronze or whatever. Uh, uh, it's, it's really the... Uh, all, all, the all the lawyers are divided in uh, two non-equal uh, group. Everyone knows uh, why uh, it is prohibited, but only few, which a smaller part of lawyers, can create the solution how to do, how to uh, work out the obstacles. And uh, the uh, biggest disadvantage of the, of, of the Ukrainian regulation is not that it is uh, far behind the European US regulation. The biggest disadvantage is that it is too slow too too slow it is uh, slower than the uh, the russian one it's slower than the ma ma many of the uh, eastern uh, eastern european countries and the speed uh, have to be uh, have to be uh, faster uh, because with this uh, kind of speed we will uh, be always uh, behind always for ages uh, i agree that the future uh, will be bright but I want uh, to see this future because uh, not many of the, of the people in the audience will be able uh, to see this future uh, unless we will be faster. May I just uh, add one thing? Uh, of course, we're here to discuss investing abroad, uh, but uh, please keep in mind that the uh, Ukrainian stock market, uh, even though it's uh, very tiny, slowly developing uh, and contracting at this stage, is still rather attractive. We still have a few good companies, and uh, uh, with the help of God, uh, they will not go out of market. But uh, uh, this kind of low valuation and attractiveness uh, is not uh, me doing some marketing. I just came from the U.S. investor conference, and they have uh, at the plate any choice they can make in the world. Uh, but they just uh, put me against the wall and asking for opportunities to invest in Ukraine, because many Ukrainian companies trade at some two, three times PE value. Yeah, there are corporate governance issues. Uh, shares of Motor City are arrested. There is a criminal investigation against the owner. Uh, some not very smart people talking about uh, reprivatization, which is the most idiotic thing one would mention when the IMF is uh, pushing for privatization. But uh, the market is attractive. So for those of you who is just at the very, very initial stage uh, uh, of uh, making up an investment portfolio or trying uh, uh, your idea you you can first look at ukrainian companies uh, as uh, alexei mentioned the costs are much smaller you don't need to buy lots of fund you can start uh, with as little as thousand grivna ten thousand grivna and, and then see if, if it's yours 
uh, you, you forget to mention that uh, if uh, you invest in uh, local uh, government bonds, uh, you are free of the uh, tax income. Oh, income tax, sorry, because uh, uh, the uh, Abagese uh, is not uh, ta uh, taxed with the income ta tax for uh, for individuals and foreign uh, and foreign uh, investors, which is one of the biggest advantage of the local stock market, stock or securities market. Yeah, it's a very valid point. If we will have some more time we can talk also about uh, investing in those local assets and you know now the Ovegeze which is local uh, uh, government bonds are very much uh, demanded as an alternative to banking deposits which are also taxable and which provide uh, rather low yields in the current uh, you know market but I would like to return to our investing abroad question and I would like to suggest a very small challenge to our two representative of, of investment managers. Uh, let's play a case. I am an investor. Uh, we, I believe that we all uh, hope that uh, investing abroad should be something available for a middle class citizen. So like a middle class citizen, I assume I would be eager to invest like $100 per month to offshore uh, market and uh, I have actually no clue how I can do it but I want to do it on a continuous basis so I get my salary per month and invest uh, contribute $100 more to my uh, offshore uh, portfolio would you each would each which of you advise me what would be the best way to do it given the obstacles and you know uh, current environment to wait <laughs> to wait until uh, the local broker uh, provide the opportunity to to get the money uh, within the country because every time you will uh, wire the one hundred uh, dollar uh, transfer you will pay at least uh, twenty bucks per transaction so it's twenty percent of the uh, yield will be uh, eaten only by the banking system so just wait but if 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 you are uh, uh, bold in, uh, bolder and your uh, investment plan uh, started at, uh, say, uh, 1,000 uh, per, per month or per quarter, uh, there, uh, there, there are uh, many ways to, uh, to invest that, that kind of money and uh, to, to uh, with the, uh, with the uh, yield which is higher than the cost of the transfer which is still $20 per transaction, which is like 2% of you know, the notional, which is still a loss from the just start of the investment. Uh, 1.7, uh, which is not, not, not so big. Okay. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, we have a certain minimum cap of $10,000, uh, because we believe that foreign markets uh, uh, are not an easy walk, right? You should be... Uh, already, if not shrewd investor, but at least an educated investor. And with one uh, hundred dollar a month uh, transaction cost uh, will eat up uh, all of the potential profit. Uh, I, I would probably modify Lusha's answer. Don't wait. Uh, use this money to invest locally uh, to to boost the value and accumulate uh, the uh, transfer uh, of a big amount at a later stage. And you can do it either through uh, some bond structure or some uh, safe uh, stock which pay dividends. So you may end up at the end of the year having more than one thousand uh, dollars, hopefully, and then you can worry and invest. Uh, cool. the, the answer is wait in local securities. Okay. <laughs> so we have... But uh, if, 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 if your uh, question uh, can be modified and uh, the, uh, the potential client which uh, uh, collecting money, in for, for example, in uh, government bonds uh, here, here on, or with a local broker, uh, accumulated 1,000 uh, US uh, dollars, say, in, 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 in some, uh, some number of months, uh, my idea is that the uh, investment strategy pretty much depends on the nature uh, of the of, uh, of of the individual. Because if you are uh, considering some kind of pension plan, mm -hmm. this uh, the strategy will be one. 
if uh, you're close to the gambling, uh, the, the strategy will be quite, uh, quite different. So for example, if you want to, to uh, gamble with the Bitcoins, which uh, is uh, possible legally, you can uh, buy uh, securities which uh, 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 replicate the, uh, the price of the, uh, of the Bitcoin. We all know that uh, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange announced the futures uh, based on Bitcoin index. So uh, there are uh, uh, many uh, ways to, to do it legally at the moment. And uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 more, uh, the more we will wait, the more uh, ways to invest uh, in su such uh, quite risky uh, assets uh, will be available. But uh, from that uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, two ultimate uh, end of the, of the strategy, uh, they wrap uh, something in the middle like uh, the ETF, which is Andre mentioned, uh, which can be, in, uh, can be uh, used for moderate strategy uh, with uh, adequate risks and uh, with the yield, which is uh, uh, much bigger even uh, with the uh, yield of the uh, local, local government bonds. So, uh, and the uh, usual usual advice in this in these cases is to diversify uh, and the the uh, you, you you cannot uh, you, you you do not have to invest all the all the money in just one ETF you may choose uh, different types of ETF including uh, those based on the emerging markets uh, the the uh, devel developed markets and uh, and build its own p portfolio which is uh, once more uh, pretty much uh, depends on the nature of the individual and the uh, purposes of the investing. I would add here that uh, as a CFA chart holder, we read a lot about diversification and it just does, doesn't come out of the blue. Uh, I, I was lucky to listen to the <laughs> presentation of Mark Mobius, a famous uh, investor, uh, Frank Templeton. Uh, he also in his speech mentioned the power of diversification and of course, Diversification comes uh, with uh, investment requirements. You cannot uh, have uh, 100 uh, shares in your portfolio uh, for 100 bucks. That's just not possible. So you, you need to understand the minimum amount. Oh, there is a question. Let, let me finish. Uh, on the other hand, I, I agree with Alexei. There could be people who, who are ready to make the bet. Uh, I, for example, know very little about modern technology, but uh, there could be someone who discovered a unique company which is about to be acquired by Apple because the guy knows it. And he can put all his money and borrow from friends. That's a bet. It's a almost uh, like a casino, but maybe a little bit more educated bet. And he can make huge money if, if the stock just uh, shoots up. Uh, we would not be advising to do it. Uh, a, we do not have expertise on this particular company, and B, uh, we have the fiduciary duty of warn clients about risks, and we will be doing it, but it is possible. ETF, which is exchange-traded fund, gives you an access to a uh, broader investment basket, uh, and within the ETF, you can still make a choice. You can uh, choose emerging market companies, you can choose US, a blue chip, small chip, or you can even, as Alexia mentioned, combine several ETFs. But you, 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 can, you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, we have one question probably, yes? Yeah. My name is Olga Burenko and I'm a member of the board of CFI Society Ukraine. And we organize this workshop and I'm just cu curious and I have a question to the audience. Uh, please raise your hands <laughs> if you wish to invest abroad. I just want to know if you would like to invest. Basically, if we wasted our time or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, th those uh, who uh, did not raise their hand probably uh, is sleeping. So th <laughs> there are a lot of people. And please raise your hands if you will still consider investing and will not invest after hearing all these obstacles. Or will you will consider invest. Okay, so yeah. we have some fresh new potential foreign investors or yeah. investors to the foreign markets. So as a potential investor, I, as I understand, I can come to local broker and uh, they will explain to me how to do this. Yes? 
Am I correct? Let, let, let me answer for, for my company. Uh, because we are lucky to have an uh, offshore entity in the group structure, we can provide this uh, service. So yes, you can visit the local office uh, to bring all the necessary documents to get the brokerage agreement which you need uh, for the uh, commercial bank which is issuing the electronic license on behalf of the NBU. So you have uh, access to the local uh, specialists who act on behalf of a foreign broker providing this service. And in case of Alexei, I think uh, there are certain limitations he, want, he may want to repeat. Uh, uh, the limitations is uh, quite the same, uh, but uh, we ac accept uh, the investments uh, from 1,000 uh, US, uh, which, is, which is not uh, strict, but it's advisable. Uh, do not uh, waste your money investing uh, 100 at the moment. Uh, um, but but uh, we, we all expect, I, I will repeat it for the third time, that uh, this restriction will be waived soon. Uh, and the commercial banks uh, are accepting the uh, agreement with the local broker as um, uh, proof of the, uh, of, of the um, the uh, how to say it in English, the, the proof of the contract uh, with the uh, uh, which is which is required uh, to do the investment in the uh, foreign securities. Once again, uh, look, look, yeah, 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 proven documents uh, which is uh, 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 required to provide to the commercial bank uh, to get the electronic license uh, from this from the National Bank of Ukraine. So you, you, uh, in my case, for example, it was uh, mid of mid of July when I, I uh, uh, got the license. Uh, I, I I provided uh, the bank with the my uh, declaration to the uh, tax authorities, uh, the uh, contract with my company, Denver uh, Capital, and the uh, application with uh, which is which is set by the regulation. Uh, just just three documents. And so that was uh, enough to, to, get, get, to get the license. Uh, my investment was, by the way, uh, 1,000 US. I uh, put them uh, into three uh, shares of uh, Facebook and three shares of uh, Apple. Uh, at that time, it was uh, approximately 950. The rest of the money I put into, uh, in, in, I don't know, in two, in two uh, shares of uh, Bank of America. And uh, at the moment, uh, my uh, statement is uh, above uh, 1,100 uh, uh, US. So I have already uh, get the, get the uh, income which is more than the uh, cost of the transaction, hopefully. Uh, but uh, nev nevertheless, it's the uh, so-called so paper profit. Uh, I, uh, I I do not uh, I'm, I'm not going to sell this this stock at the moment, and so there is a risk that the the uh, companies uh, will do something wrong, and their their capitalization when when uh, when fall, and my portfolio will will be uh, less than one thousand. It's it's, it's a risky business. So, oh, we have one more question. Yes, please. Hello. Okay, I have a question about taxation. For example, uh, you earned around $100 uh, for your portfolio right now, and uh, uh, okay, the year will end, and you need to pay uh, like some kind of taxes here in Ukraine. But you have the money, as far as I understand, abroad. So, uh, how Univer will manage this? And uh, I mean, uh, to, to to pay $20 of uh, taxes and to pay $20 for uh, wire transfer is like to to big amount i believe like 100% of your taxation you also uh, have a cost of wire transfer and so how how this uh, you will be, you will be managing this the situation? Uh, the taxation agent uh, does not oblige to pay the taxes unless uh, it ha it is the source of paying out uh, if the uh, if the client of Univer is getting uh, his money back, only in that case uh, we have to uh, to inform the taxation uh, authorities uh, about uh, the uh, income of the client. Uh, we, uh, the paper uh, uh, profit is not the taxable. Okay, thank you. 
Do everyone, do everyone understand the, the term paper profit? Do we have one more question? Yeah, please. Hello. And um, what about the most cost-effective taxation plan? It's like um, physical person or entrepreneur, which is the most cost-effective? Uh, as we uh, said uh, many times today, uh, the uh, current, uh, uh, current uh, possibilities, current uh, ways of investing uh, are available to individuals only. No uh, individual entrepreneurs, no legal entities, uh, no pension funds, no uh, investment funds, no corporate clients, just, uh, 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 just a uh, natural person. That's it. They have another way. They have I to get the individual license. Yeah. If, yep. if your goal is to minimize taxes, then uh, you, you think about instrument. And we mentioned today the local treasuries. Uh, in uh, Grivna, it uh, yields 15.5%. Uh, and uh, you, you pay zero tax on this interest. Uh, I think you still pay the military uh, payment, yep. this 1.5%. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So if your sole purpose is uh, low tax, uh, stay in uh, local treasuries and that's it. Yes, you, you, you carry currency risk uh, since it's Krivna, but uh, luckily we are in a relatively stable period. Uh, but the, if, if your aim is diversifying uh, some foreign investments and realizing strategies abroad, uh, then your only option is at this stage as an individual. Mm -hmm. So maybe the last question, if there are, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Um, maybe you know that um, recently there are quite a lot of individuals who receive, like IT specialists, who receive uh, the money from foreign companies. And, and not so far ago, National Bank allowed that those people do not have to bring money to Ukraine. So they basically may um, remain at some foreign accounts or if those money were earned abroad and stayed there, but the individuals are still the citizens of Ukraine and have to comply with NBU requirements, right? So in this case, um, if people want to invest, they already have money there, uh, what are uh, the documents and do they need any license to invest from National Bank? And in the terms of taxes, probably they will never get uh, any profits back to Ukraine, but will stay. So, uh, what kind of taxes do they have to pay? What license they need, and what kind of taxes do they have to pay here in Ukraine? Thank you. Regarding the licenses, this is what I told before: that we, if the source of the money is outside of Ukraine, that you don't need the licensing. You can do whatever you want with the money that you obtain from abroad, and it stays abroad. And regarding taxation, it's uh, on your own risk. You have to declare it if it's not done with a broker official. Uh, it, de it, uh, it depends on whether the uh, the person or the uh, individual entrepreneur is a local tax uh, tax resident. Because yes, if you, is. It, it is. Yes. Uh, so uh, local tax uh, taxes are applied. Uh, the general rule. No exclusion. I guess you uh, you already pay the taxes uh, when you uh, report or recognize this income. Uh, at some point of time, right. uh, part of that money was also subject to official conversion. A part of it, you, you had to convert into local currency. I don't, I'm not sure if that restriction is waived. Uh, but surely you can sign a brokerage agreement uh, as an individual with a foreign broker and wire this uh, money to your investment account and invest over there. If you earn additional income on top of what you already earned uh, as an IT specialist, uh, you have uh, income from investment, then again, it's uh, your responsibility to file this in your tax uh, residency, which is Ukraine. As a broker, we provide you all the papers uh, which uh, show whether you, you made any profit or losses, and uh, you use this paper <coughs> when you file your uh, tax form. Thank you. And, and, and as, as a uh, resident of Ukraine, you, you, you uh, also uh, have an option to invest through the local broker. Uh, and there are some uh, content pros we uh, have already discussed. Uh, but the uh, taxation is uh, in, gen gen in general way. You just uh, have to file uh, your uh, incomes, uh, file your uh, costs uh, at the, uh, with the declaration and uh, submit it to the 
uh, taxation authority uh, by the 1st of uh, May, I guess. So I would like to, s to say a few wrap-up words. First of all, I would like to point attention to the, to the instrument that uh, Alexei has uh, mentioned. For those who were attending the FinTech workshop and are interested in, in cryptocurrencies, Alexei has mentioned an official instrument linked to cryptocurrency uh, payout, which you can basically buy legitimately, while, you know, uh, National Bank of Ukraine and the government is in Ukraine are still, uh, you know, thinking about how to treat cryptocurrencies. Uh, now you have a fully legitimate instrument. You buy this kind of security. You have a payout linked to a cryptocurrency, and you pay all your taxes, and you invest and enjoy the uh, the profit. So that's I think cool, and that's uh, what I wanted to point out. And as a wrap up, uh, I would like to recollect in my mind my uh, young university years when uh, I was preparing my, um, uh, my work for the investment uh, topic. And uh, there was a so-called uh, website uh, bull bearings, so like bulls and bears, which provided the uh, possibility to model, create a model portfolio of real stocks uh, with real prices. And my work was I was creating a real portfolio, uh, we're managing it half a year and then presenting the results to, to my uh, students, uh, to my colleagues. So my point is that at that time, you know, the, this was the only possibility for me as a Ukrainian citizen just to have some kind of virtual sense of the uh, foreign assets and the foreign markets. Uh, today, uh, I just, uh, understood that this was the first time in my financial career, which is already eight years in Ukraine, when I am discussing the real opportunity for the Ukrainian citizen to invest some personal funds to the real foreign instruments. And we were here discussing like Facebook, Nike, and any other Amazon uh, um, instruments that you really can now invest. And I believe this is great. So uh, for this, I would like to uh, thank each of our speakers. First of all, uh, Emal, who is a representative of the National Bank of Ukraine, who finally made it happen. And uh, the representatives of the two great investment management companies, Univer and Dragon Capital, Alexei and Andrei. Thank you for very practical, fundamental, and as uh, I see from the uh, last you know, number of questions from the audience, very interesting uh, discussions that we had today. And uh, I suggest we uh, go to the cocktail receptions and celebrate this uh, exciting day and the practical workshop. Yeah. But, but sorry, sorry guys, uh, be before we are, uh, uh, before everyone is going to the coffee break, I, I want to uh, announce the idea that every one of, uh, of us here uh, have to participate in collecting money for uh, the monuments for those who invented the electronic license. Don't forget about it. Um, like just a just couple of words. Um, I only want to say that this is only the beginning of the long way we have to go to cross. Uh, and uh, the, the another thing is that the most important thing is to change the way of thinking of the regulators because we lived all this time with 26 years, 23 years, in the mode of uh, legislation which was aimed to fight with the capital outflow of Ukraine. That's why we have an agreement, association agreement with EU. We have uh, obligations to provide the uh, free capital flow, which, is, which has never uh, was existing in Ukraine. This is something that we will face new. And unfortunately, we cannot say that it will happen tomorrow because it's a long way. It's, uh, but the direction, direction is uh, there. And I hope we finally will come in our life, Alexei. And Thank mine you. too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>